Greetings AP Calculus AB students, Mr. Record here with a very short video that extends our lesson concerning the chain rule, but then at the same time segues into the idea of taking the derivative of trigonometric functions using the chain rule. So hopefully you remember from maybe some previous study or watching some previous videos that the derivatives of the six basic trig functions just require a little bit of effort in terms of memorizing them. And, and you, you don't really have to think of the chain rule versions as being any extra work on your part. For example, hopefully we know that the derivative with respect to x of the sine of x is the cosine of x, or maybe a more challenging one. The derivative of the cosecant of x is negative cosecant x cotangent of x. To apply the chain rule, you just use the basic idea that we're going to probably be taking the derivative of the sign of something more than just x. Maybe it's a 2x, maybe it's an x squared, something along those lines. So you're going to use the basic formula and then just tack on the derivative of that u. So let's go ahead and take a look at our example 4. Now to get things started, I'm going to break this down much the same way that I did when I first introduced the chain rule. In other words, I'm going to go ahead and suggest that we find the parentheses in the problem so that we can isolate the u. So in the particular case of y equals sine of 2x, we're going to go ahead and put the parentheses around the 2x. What that will do is it will set off the idea that our u is equal to 2x. And then, of course, our y is going to be the sine of u. And then if you remember, the chain rule was basically saying that if we need to take the derivative of y with respect to x, all we need to do then is take the derivative of y with respect to u and multiply that by the derivative of u with respect to x. And we could really do those two derivatives in either order uh, that we choose. So for this particular problem, then the dy dx would start off with the derivative of y with respect to u, which is the derivative of sine, which we know to be cosine of that u. And then we finish up by multiplying by the derivative of that u, which in this case is the 2. Now we don't really want to leave our answer like that because we want this answer to be in terms of both x and uh, only x, not x and u. So we just simply replace the u with 2x. That's sometimes called a back substitution. And it's quite often the case that that 2 is going to be placed in front. I'm going to choose to put parentheses around the 2x to kind of make it stand out just a little bit. And boom, there it is. There is your derivative of your trig function. Let's go ahead and take a look at part b. In this particular case, I'm going to suggest that we push ourselves a little bit and not necessarily have to write down the u equal and the y equal. If we use our knowledge of the fact that a chain rule is just asking us to take the derivative of the outside function and then multiply that by the derivative of the inside function, we have our chain rule assembled. So if the outside function here would be the cosine of, let's call this something, the cosine of something. Well, the derivative of the cosine of something is negative sine of that something. You want to be really patient when you use the chain rule. Don't take the derivative of that something too soon. You want to leave it there, 3x minus 1, and then finish it off by taking the derivative of that something after the fact. And then, of course, you could float that 3 out in front alongside that negative sign and this is the typical way that you would see this probably on a multiple choice. All right, one more. The derivative of secant of 4x. Well, we're going to start this off by taking the derivative of the outside function, which is secant. The derivative of secant is secant times tangent. Now, notice you want to make sure that you keep the 4x hanging around. You want the 4x to still be that something. The derivative of the secant of something is secant something times tangent something. Now you finish off the problem by taking the derivative of that something, which is 4. Now, it's more likely that this 4 would be written in front as a final multiple choice answer. Um, but it's still equivalent nonetheless. One thing I wanted to talk about with number 
or letter C here is that a lot of times I've seen students in my classes in the past want to take the derivative of 4 twice. And I think it's because they see 4x occurring twice in the answer to the derivative, and thus they think that is going to prompt them to use 4 times 4. But it all goes back to the original problem. The only uh, we only saw one instance of that 4x, so we only have to take the derivative of the 4x just that one single time. Anyway, I hope this video helps. We're going to go ahead and expand into uh, our next video uh, where we'll talk about using the chain rule more than once with a particular trig function. We hope we see you around then. Thanks for joining.